thank you, Dharam sir. Thank you, Shagun sir. And thank you, Atit bhai. He's not here, but uh, I'm thankful to all three of you. And uh, I think uh, more than this teaching learning process, we have a very close relation among ourselves. And I feel like you are all my younger brothers. And uh, it's a wonderful opportunity to be with you and so many people all together out here. It's a wonderful effort you people are doing. And uh, God bless your effort. And I'm sure uh, this is going to go a long way in changing the dimensions of physiotherapy in our country. So I'll not take much of the time uh, because we've got only limited time here. I'm going to share a little thing. It's very difficult to share everything today uh, live here. We have got limitation of time. We have got limitation of the interaction that humans can do, that feeling of touch, feeling the body and learning that practically. But still, given those limitations, I'm trying to put an overview of osteopathy. How can it boost your practice? Uh, you being a physiotherapist can have a big advantage if you practice osteopathic techniques or chiropractic techniques along with your physiotherapeutic techniques. It's a one 50-year-old profession. It's not new. It was founded by Dr. A.T. Still, who was a physician himself. But then he found that there was something lacking in the modern day science of that time. And that was, there was nothing which could bridge in between the medicine and surgery. If you have a small problem, medicine can make it better. Large problems, you need surgery. But what about patients in between that? So that road or that bridging is where a problem which is just a little inflammation to a problem which goes into structural deformation, there's a big road. And that road can be taken care of using osteopathy. Already, I've been introduced by Dr. Dharam and Dr. Shagun. I'm working as Dean Student Welfare at SPS University. It's one of the oldest universities in North India. We started our first batch of almost 26 years back. I'm also working as medical director. We are having a chain of clinics. And I've been trying to learn these techniques because when I came out of Natar, I was blessed with the best place I could have learned, but there was a very limited knowledge at the time in India among physios. The Western world was growing at a very faster pace than we were in India. So we try to bridge that gap between the Western education and the Indian education. And this process is going on. Uh, luckily, this year I was very lucky to visit a chiropractic university in the USA and had an amazing experience there. I've got 150 publications, including three papers at WCPT, and I'm trying to bridge between academics, research, and clinics. That's my whole objective. Now, coming to the topic. If you're a worker, you need tools to work. And every tool adds to your ability. And osteopathy could be a wonderful tool to your working of manual therapy. I just try to put it in this way. These are some wonderful techniques that you can see on your screen. We were clubbed together and given a shape called physiotherapy. Similarly, other professions made their shapes and gave them different names. But to make it real and make it become really conquering, we could put them all together and make something called as a manual therapist out of it. Now, why we need to add those things? The problem is, for, for certain unknown reasons, or maybe for the sake of convenience, we divided the body into small, small pieces. Many people claim, I'm a shoulder specialist, I'm a knee specialist. Wonderful. But is the body working that way? No, the body is not working that way. We have been made to see that way because that's the way we have been taught. If you see on this map, it looks 
that we have these divisions of these countries. And these divisions are very important because we cannot cross them without visas or other details. But God did not do that. God made this in a very different way. These divisions are all man-made. And so is the human body. It doesn't work this way as seen in this little animation. You cannot divide the body into segments because the whole body is covered by one single envelope and we call that as fascia from head to toe. And if you pull one end of the fascia, the other end will be whole. And this is what is very important to learn. The connection between one part of the body to the other, a pelvic facial connection here can go and pull up onto the neck. The misalignment in the pelvis or the base of a body can bring changes up to the neck. Not only this way, where you can get a pain in the neck from the pelvis, it goes the other way around also. Like in this image, if you can see, because of the changes in the temporomandibular joint, I've intentionally picked this up because I think three, four days back, Dr. Celerio was there on this YouTube channel and he was showing how we can put some devices in the mouth and it can change the tone of the entire muscles in the body. So if you see, these changes come down or they may go up. If I have a over pronated foot, my ilium is going to rotate posteriorly and my shoulder is going to drop on my side. So one little change in one part of the body can create problems elsewhere. Not only the musculoskeletal system is interconnected, here is an example how a visceral system is also an integral part of this connection or laying down of a network of fascia which extends from head to toe. Now, if you could see on the image on the left hand side, which I marked here, the kidney is in normal position and it is way above the lumbosacral plexus. But if the hepatorenal ligaments become loose, the kidney has stosis and it goes down, you will find there will be a sciatica which is born about born from the descending of the kidney downwards, the renal ptosis. So there, if you treat with the normal measures, it's not going to work. You have to treat that patient from working on the renal fascia. Similarly, we get patients with frozen shoulders. We try to work on the capsule. Sometimes, those who are now into manual therapy, they know subscapulary, spectralis, minor muscle, they play a very important role. If you have to take your arm into full flexion up, you need the soft tissue to be free so that the scapula can glide and then the humerus can move around with the increased space in the acromion, uh, uh, below the acromion. Now, if a patient has weak ligaments of the lever, the lever will descend down. Normally the lever moves up and down when we breathe, but it goes back with the next breath. But in certain patients, we find a lever going downwards. It is subluxated in osteopathic terms, downwards. When it goes down, so the ligaments are weak, but still other ligaments pull the rib cage down. On the rib cage are attached the pectoralis minor. Remember, they come from the third, fourth, and fifth rib, and they go on the coracoid process, and they pull the coracoid process down. So if you have tight fascia there, your hands will not go up. So the problem is not coming from a musculoskeletal system, it is coming from a visceral dysfunction. That is the opening of the domain of your corrections by osteopathy. This is, you can see the coronary ligaments, and the triangular ligaments which hold the lever in place. When they become lax, the lever may go down. Not only we are going to have a problem in the shoulder, but this problem can be more bigger. You can have headaches and migraines because the anterior longitudinal ligament is also going to be pulled down. You may have a poor immunity 
you may have depression and nervous kind of problems. So I'll hold, uh, I'll say a pitara, I could you call it Hindi, of the problem open up. So the Pandora box, when it opens, it gives you trouble. Now, the biggest problem we had years back was we were thinking pain as an enemy. That was the only thing we were trying to work on the patients whenever the patient came to us. Pain is not an enemy. It's like a fire alarm. If you have something started burning, the fire alarm comes up. It lets you know something is wrong. But what we are trying to do as physical therapists, traditionally, I'm not talking about all, but when I educated, I was trying to put tenses and IFTs and cold packs to just to relieve the pain. The patient used to feel better symptomatically, and I used to be very happy about it. And so did the patient. But we were actually making the protective system go away. Someday when the real fire would come, there was no alarm left because we had put up the alarm. So the things what we need to work upon is the cause of the problem on the bottom of the screen, if you see, not on the symptoms, the problem is to be managed that way. Even if you don't treat, I tell you, and it's a real life experience of Robin McKenzie, who says in his research that more than 80% of the people, if we do not treat them after one month, will become pain free. He has taken the example of the low back pain. But then why do we need to intervene? We need to intervene because if you can see on the screen, if a patient has a stress, he gets some pain, he may get better a little bit with time. Second time, more stress comes and he gets more pain and then he visits a doctor or a therapist and we try to suppress the pain, it goes down. But this pain will come back at a greater frequency, at a greater intensity. But now if we intervene, if you could see on the dotted pink line, if we add myofascial elasticity in these tissues, this pain will not only come at a lesser frequency, but probably will not be intense to trouble the patient. So that is the thing we need to keep in mind. I've intentionally put these five, six different slides trying to compare this with the weed grass. This is I have done for you to explain your patients. This was a wonderful carpet grass and some wheat has come into this, just like the pain which comes in the musculoskeletal system. If we cut this grass on the top, not take out the roots, or we suppress the pain from the painful joint, it looks better. But then some stresses can water that. Some stresses can make it grow bigger. Or sometimes, if the stresses are slow, this grass weed will keep on spreading and it will destroy the grass. And same thing happens with your joint. They become dearranged, dysfunctional, and may deform as well. So, Ultimately, what is required is we need to throw this rotten portion out to save the rest of the portion. And that is what our replacement surgery is all about. So you're not saving the patient from miseries, rather you are making him become a part of process where eventually this part will be changed by artificial things. So here is where Osteopathy and all of physiotherapeutic manual exercises or exercises can do a remedial control and save those knees or other joints from these kinds of problems and add life back to those joints. This problem is multifactorial. It's not a single factor which is responsible for this. The first factor which was recognized in osteopathy was the articular dysfunction. It is, still mean, uh, it is still thought that it was the bone which when misaligned would create a pressure on the nerves and the other structures and was responsible for pain. So the bone, the cause of pathology was recognized as osteopathy. And this happens when the joint gets misaligned. Now, if you could see, 
normally the joints are very well aligned and all the nerves out here are free to move there is a lot of freedom for the nerves to do their work properly there is no hindrance in their working impulses but when a bone will get misaligned because of various reasons which i'm going to discuss shortly you can see here the nerve now gets compromised in its working and this is what we call it misalignment hypermobility or subluxation whatever you call that but this is the cause it may be born out because of the muscles on one side are tight which pull the joint out of its alignment every joint has got something which call it a neutral zone white and punjabi says the joint will move easily in that joint free of any restrictions so if i have to take my arm up into abduction my humeral head you know has to go down but you all know that and it goes with ease so this goes down and when i take back into adduction it goes up so this neutral zone movement is very easy and it's not restricted the problem comes when the joint gets out of this neutral zone and it gets stuck into a plastic zone and the problems when it gets stuck to the plastic zone are bigger than this little animation the joint when struck will make the joint lose its mobility and once mobility is lost the diff diffusion process or the imbibition process of the disc gets restricted the disc start degenerating and we have the disc herniation the synovial tissues have also a dysfunction and we get the problems like osteoarthritis and synovial problems so the key for this is the joint getting misaligned so myofascial elements is one of the reasons because of the poor posture but another reason is the trauma which we get across daily with the certain little uh, pitfalls that we encounter in our work now this is what i wanted to show now you can see on the top of the screen how the joint is movable if i pull it also it goes back into the original position there is no restriction and i call the joint into the in a neutral zone but now if i add some tightness here by adding another band of rubber here now this side has become more tighter as compared to this side now this will lose its ability to go back it's getting struck and finally over a period of time it will become finally struck to lose its mobility totally as it goes into a plastic zone now whether it's loss of mobility whether it's a postural problem or it's an inflammation which has come from minor injury or some inflammatory disorders like rheumatoid arthritis all present as pain redness and heat initially so your traditional electrotherapy and cryotherapy can make all the pain and inflammation go away but what happens in inflammatory pain nothing is left behind but if you see in the myofascial structures here the postural imbalance still stays and again the joint will be pulled into this misalignment and inflammatory problem and so with this traumatic pain if you have an ankle sprain you put a cast over it you no doubt take away the pain and inflammation and pain becomes better but then the patient always has the chances of recurrent problems because the joint is still misaligned i've got numerous examples in my clinics where in single sitting not only the pain of the patient was taken away after the ankle sprain but also he was free to move the very moment after we had corrected him so we not only work on taking the inflammation away but we correct the misalignment which leads to restriction and more and more pain of course the ligament heals on its own if we put it in the correct position So this is what is fixation versus normal joints. If you can see in the image, the joints are freely moving. But the problem comes when the joints get struck like this. Now, if in this image you could see this joint is no longer moving, it has got stuck in one direction. 
it cannot go into the other the other direction. This is we call as fixations. Chiropractors call it as subluxation, or physios call it as hypomobility. It can be in one direction, it can be multiple direction, or it will be combination of these. Now the ilium will be struck posteriorly or anterior rotational faults. It could go up, up slip and down slip, or it could go into an what we call as internal ilium or iron ilium, which is equivalent to an out flare, which physiotherapists use the word. When one ilium moves closer to the sacrum and the ASIS goes away from the umbilical. This is what we say, it's a pelvic out flare. You can see the ASI is moving outwards and the ilium going inwards. If you now measure the distance from the umbilicus, the side of the out flare ASIS will be far away from the umbilicus as compared to the other side. Such patients will have a lot of musculoskeletal problems. Like the patient is going to have pain and tenderness over the PSIS because the anterior part of the sacroiliac ligaments are now getting stretched. So there will be some pain which will be dull or sharp in nature. Also, since the pubic bones are getting separated because the ilium is now coming closer and the ASI is going outwards, the patient will have tenderness at the pubic bone. The patient will have pain during certain weight bearing activities. And more importantly, when the ilium goes internally, the entire foot goes into external rotation. So the patient will have the one foot a little bit more oriented laterally, and if I try to take it into medial rotation, it will not go. Not all external rotations are iron ilium, but all iron iliums will lead to external rotation like fixation. That's very important to remember. Now, how we can find that tension? We have many methods to promotion, to alignment, to neurological things like leg checks, thermal scans. We can have numerous ways. And it's always better to try one or two different things. No single test in this world, including MRIs, 100% accurate. So we can do two, two or three different tests depending upon what is your education in that thing. For example, I do a lot of leg length checks. Now, when it rotates inward, it moves in such a way that the leg becomes longer as the acetabulum is a little bit downward. So one way is by checking the functional leg length in which the, uh, in iron ilium, the leg length will become longer. It can become in all other problems as well. So I'll show you how to verify that and distinguish from the other problems. Another way, I could do a motion palpation. We can make the patient sit in this position, palpate his ischial fibrosity. Makes his knees come together and then ask the patient to take the feet outwards so that his legs are virtually moving into internal rotation. Now, in this position, if you're placing your hands on the ischial fibrosities, the ischial fibrosities should move laterally. But if they do not move laterally, it is a sign of an iron ilium or a pelvic out flare. I can even use radiography to do that. Now, let me see how I can make you understand this. So I have drawn certain points, one on the S1 tubercle, one on the pubic junction, of pubic symphysis. Then I've drawn two lines, one vertical line, which joins, uh, goes down straight from the S1, and second is the horizontal line, which is on the top of the femoral head. These two lines should be perpendicular to each other. After that, I mark the most medial part of the ilium in this X-ray, and the most lateral part of the ilium. Now I can join the central line with this to medial marks and as well as I can connect the two medial and the lateral point. In a pelvic outflow of our iron ilium, you could see there's a difference in the length. 
the ilium has increased in its width because it is rotated this way. And it has come closer to the sacrum. That's why this portion has become shorter. And also this line is away from the pubic symphysis, not exactly on the pubic symphysis. So you could see this again happening here. When we see from this image, because the shape in two dimensionally will be altered by ilium moving, this side on the iron ilium or the outer, this is bigger as compared to the same length of the line on the opposite side, which is now extending beyond the ilium limits. And also the pubic symphysis is moved towards the side of the iron ilium fault. So once I found this fault, I can use the high velocity thrust to correct it. So you can see how I thrusted that back into position. I placed my hand on the PSIS, which had gone medially and internally, and I pulled it back towards me using a thrust. This I'm going to show you on a live patient. We talked about that I and ilium, the length of the limb becomes longer. You can see here the length on this image on the left side is bigger as compared to the right side of the leg. And the patient is lying down. And my osteopathic and chiropractic maneuvers, I learned how to find different things. I take it down, the length doesn't change it, which shows that it's not a rotational polylalium, rather it's an inflare and outflare fault. And now I'm going to do something which is called a pressure test. You can see here, I took my hand up and pushed the ilium outwards with my hand. When I push that, temporarily, the length now becomes equal. The joint has not been treated, but it has become equal. Now I'm going to use my manipulation on this patient. This is just two days back in my clinic. I'm keeping my fingers medial to the PSIS using a kick method, and then I'm going to thrust the joint to get the ilium back to the position. And this is how I corrected it. Now again, if I check the leg length, now you could see the leg length on both the sides have become equal. So this is how I can correct the fault. So if I'm not good at manipulations, nothing to worry. We can use other osteopathic techniques like MET. Now, how I'm going to do this, watch on this little video. I place the hand medial to the PSIS and I'm going to pull with one hand. The other arm or the hand, I'm going to take it, take the patient's leg into flexion, adduction, and medial rotation. So I take the leg into adduction, flexion, and medial rotation. And when I reach the barrier, where the movement becomes a little difficult, it's not that I cannot move. If I try to move, the spine will rotate and the pelvis will rotate and the movement will be there. But then the movement will be not at the sacroiliac leg joint. So the point at which I get a little resistance or the movement becomes difficult, I ask the patient to do external rotation. And the patient holds it for 10 seconds with about 20% effort. On relaxing, exhaling, I take the joint to the next barrier. I'm going to repeat this procedure two to three times, and then I'm going to recheck. And then I'm going to retest with a motion pan patient or my X-ray or with my uh, leg length testing. I can also use this modern day toys, which is the therapist now get it. We call them as bone adjusters. These bone adjusters give a thrust very quickly. So I'm using this thrust with the adjuster to push the ilium backwards. I mean to say literally. Now, how lasting are these corrections? If you get by trauma, a trauma brought this, you manipulate the trauma to get back. But if the problems have come with chronic myofacial tightness, this will be only 
short lived. Why? This is the example of a genes launched by Levi, which they call it as a lifetime wash free genes. Believe it. They say if you wash the genes, it will last much less longer. And if you don't wash it, it will last more longer. That's a great thing. But that can only work to provide a perfect environment for that to work. Not if you do this thing. And certainly not if you do this thing. So if you sustain bad postures, if you have poor habits, it will all come back. Because these postural habits got muscles tighter on one side. Over a period of time, they started deforming the joint and something broke. And if you give electrotherapy, definitely you can heal that with lasers or something. But then it's not corrected. Still the alignment is lost. Now, when we manipulate this, this goes back, but still you can see this structure is tight. And if this stays tight, it's again going to bring it down back to the same form. So what we need to do? We need to get rid of these tight tissues. Then only we can get a more long-lasting effect. Your muscles are controlled think centers of your bones. See this little animation. You can see how the bo uh, bones are being balanced, but if one side muscle becomes tight, the bones go out of alignment. So if myofascial structures tightness is the cause, this will keep on coming back unless or until we release this myofascial tightness. To understand a little bit more in depth with this osteopathy, I'm going to explain some of the myokinetic concepts which we follow. There are various layers in the deep fascia. They normally slide over each other and the lubrication for the sliding is provided by the hyaluronic acid. There's definitely a correlation between the intensity of the pain and the thickness of this fascia. That's what research tells us. So when this tightness goes up, the movement between these planes is getting looser. This is normally how the aponeurotic fascia, which is on top, and the epimesial fascia, which covers the muscle, is happening. So if I take my hand up, my shirt, which is gliding, acts like my aponeurotic fascia on my skin. If I pull the shirt now, I'm not able to glide that. So my movement would be restricted. And this is what happens in the additions that grow in the muscles. So if I break them, then only I can restore the movement in the aponeurotic and the myofascial elements. This I can do by three different methods. That's what research tells me. Low sustain pressure, not only myokinetics, MFR, massage also work in the same direction. Heat and alkaline power environment also give us a temporary loosening of this tissue. But mind it, they last for a little time. The only thing that lasts long, longer is breaking down of these adhesions. So going back to the above examples, we had talked about the internal ilium or an pelvic outflare. Now what myoacial elements could be tight? One could be the iliocostalis muscle, especially the lumbar part of the iliocostalis muscle. You can see the pull. It's going from the ilium and attaching onto the transfer processes of the lumbar vertebra. So this is where the pull is going to come from. Or it could be the iliolumbar ligament or maybe the medial portions of the uh, these uh, yeah, quadratus lumbarum muscles, especially the iliolumbar fibers. Even this iliolumbar ligament has evolved out of the iliolumbar fibers of the quadratus lumbarum. So unless I release them, this problem will keep on coming back. Not only I need to release them, but I need to strengthen my oblique muscles. These oblique muscles along with my iliacus muscle, along with my deep muscles of the pelvic floor are going to counterbalance the pull which is coming because of the tight muscle. So this is how I can restore that. 
Now, the best thing about osteopathy is not only we find that certain visceral structures or the cranial structures are the cause of this problem, but we also know that they can be treated by these techniques. Now, this is an example how I'm using a lever lift technique. If my lever has gone down in torsis, I'm going to apply a lever lift technique to pull the lever and thus relieving the downward pull on the ribcage. So I can counterbalance that and I can take the uh, practolis minor into a position of relaxation. Similarly, we have an example here. How a cranial tissue can create a fault in the pelvic tissue. You could see the crania through dura is connected to the pelvis. That is why when we breathe, every time our sacrum goes into a nutation and counter nutation, you can keep your hand on the sacrum and you can feel it. Your myofascial tissues are connected to the dura here through this connective tissue, the myodural connection, which is connected to the false cerebellum and tentorium cerebelli, and this controls the tone and changes in the fascia of the entire body. This is the examples you could see the false cerebellum tentorium cerebelli constantly moving, which this mobility we can find by osteopathic techniques, whether it's normal or abnormal. We could see how this is moving. And this in turn, on the right hand side, you can see is bringing changes in the entire body's fascia. The body's fascia is also moving into various positions. Normally, it goes into external rotation, internal rotation, and flexion and extension, all the bones. So if there is a lack of mobility in the cranial tissue, it can create a lack of mobility in the body tissues. This is called as the craniosacral rhythm. This is the very essential thing which is there in our body. And without this, nothing in this universe can work. If you see even an atom, electrons are spinning. The earth is spinning around the sun. So all the things are under mobility or motility. So this can be restored by doing osteopathy. Having done all these things, found all the primary problems and secondary problems, when we fix it, we need to maintain that. A dentist can take care of your tooth caries or your infection in the teeth. He can do root canal. He can do a tooth extraction or whatever he feels like. But if you don't brush your teeth regularly, it will all getting worse over a period of time. Similarly, if you are not going to exercise to maintain the mobility of the joint, it will keep on coming back. For all these different faults, in osteopathy, we learn how to add elasticity of the tissues so that they make the joint stay mobile. Even if you have tightness in one muscle, they'll still make the joint stay mobile. So for that, we have certain corrective exercises. There's no time. We have already right on schedule, but I don't want to take over time of you because it's very difficult to be glued to your computer set for more than one hour. So I'm going to just show you only the relevant thing which you're talking about, say for the iron helium fault. For an iron helium fault, I'm going to restore the elasticity, but before that, let's understand the concept of elasticity. Now, if you could see this block is very strong, like this person's muscles, but it does not have the flexibility. Now, this portion is very flexible, but if I leave it, it falls down. It does not have the strength. But in our body, I need a combination of the two. I need the elasticity, which is flexible, and yet it comes back to the position and stands. So this elasticity is to be brought into your tissue to maintain that. It's just like brushing your teeth. 
most of us have back problems. I've gone to those workshops and people were so worried about their own back pain rather than the pain of their patients. And they said, sir, we have taken manipulations. We have done this. We have done this. My problem comes back. Same happened with me three, four years back. Every time I find a good manipulator, I'll ask him to treat me. And many people who are good manu manipulators, like my friend Dr. Narkesh, give, give me a wonderful manipulation, and I became better. But then, if the elasticity was not there, I started getting back to sleep. But now, I spend only about five minutes for my entire sacroiliac leg joint. I'm going to show you one exercise, but I do about eight to 10 exercises. And give me, for the last two, three years, I've got no pain in my entire spine, and I have not taken any treatment for that. I'm 50 plus, just 50 plus, not very higher than that. But then my spine and my flexibility has been wonderfully restored. So this is a single exercise, a simple exercise to do for inflare and outflare. Now we're doing the combination because when you're restoring elasticity, we do not show which bone has gone to which side. So we take into elastic limits to one side and to the other side. It's different from the flexibility exercise. Now here you see, I'm going to use my muscles which give me control, the stabilizer muscles, my deep abdominal muscles like my transverse abdominis and obliques to keep my ASIS glued to the couch here. They are going to provide me the control. There's nothing which is stabilizing me. I'm going to ensure that my ASIS sticks to this area and yet when I take it gently and slowly to the opposite side rotation, with my feet separating, but my knees together, I'm going to open that fascia in a controlled manner. So if I learn to control my fascia, which will give me a controlled flexibility without deforming the other joints, this is how I can maintain the elasticity of the tissues. And this we can do for all different kinds of problems, whether it's sacroiliac, cervical number. And if you do that, you're going to stay so magic is not just temporarily giving a pill or a one single manipulation and making the patient better. It is trying to add health in long terms to the patient's life. Slowly over a period of time, we do the right things. We are going to do the right changes. And that's what we are trying to do. We're trying to isolate ourselves. We're maintaining social distancing, getting into lockdowns so that we can control the things over a period of time. It cannot be controlled in a single way. So the right things done in the right time will change. And that's the hope we are all living on. Tomorrow, we may have a corona free world. That's all I wanted to say. Any afterthought theories, my number is there, WhatsApp number, you can contact me. Of course, Dr. Dharam is going to be with us in a short while. He's going to tell us about the questions you have posted. Thank you, everybody, for being a patient listener. Thank you, sir, for uh, such a nice, uh, nice uh, lecture. Our up lecture me to koi question hoi ni sakta, hota hi nahi hai. Aap kitna well achhe se explain karte hain usko. There are few people they have put a very uh, genuine question that I'll just put that forward for you and put the answer. Uh, sir, somebody is asking that um, how to find a real problem or it is coming uh, from somewhere from the compensation. Right. Actually, time comes that I can't see here. We use the leg length test here. So, there's a protocol. In this protocol, before adjusting it, हम कुछ और मैनुअल्स भी करते हैं ओके okay. तो उसी प्रोटोकॉल सिस्टम से हम एक तरीके से ढूंढ सकते हैं दूसरा तरीका ऑस्टियोपैथी में होता है जिसे हम थर्मल स्कैनिंग बोलते हैं इसमें हम बॉडी के पार्ट्स के ऊपर वी ट्राई टू सी द टेंपरेचर चेंजेस इवन उस एरिया में जहां पे पेन नहीं है डिसफंक्शन नहीं है और साथ ही साथ वहां पे जो मोबिलिटी होती है उसको हम क्विकली स्कैन करते हैं तो ये दो डिफरेंट मेथड्स हमारे पास जो है ऑस्टियोपैथी में कायरोप्रैक्टिक में है क्योंकि यहां पे हम लाइव नहीं कर सकते थे लिमिटेशंस थी 
बट ये चीजें हम नॉर्मली सिखाते हैं और बड़े आसानी से हम इसको ढूंढ सकते हैं हाँ उससे पता चल सकता है कि थर्मल चेंजेज और इस तरह की चीजें लोकली हैं या कहीं डिस्टेंट पार्ट पे हैं बिल्कुल सीखना चाहिए की कैसे इन चीजों को और आई थिंक जब एलोबोरेटेड लेक्चर आप लेते होंगे तब शायद इन चीजों को बताते होंगे डिटेल कि किस तरीके से स्टेप बाय स्टेप हम असेसमेंट करके और आगे जाके और इसको कैसे हम ट्रीट कर सकते हैं रूट कॉज तक कैसे पहुंच सकते हैं डेफिनेटली सो थैंक यू सर इतना अच्छा लेक्चर लिया आपने और थैंक्स फ्रॉम रिहेबिलिटेशन साइंसेस ग्रुप एट यू एक्सेप्टेड आवर इनविटेशन बहुत टाइम कम है आपके आप इसमें आए और देन वी डेफिनेटली लुक फॉरवर्ड फर्दर to have you on this platform so that ki zyada se zyada logon ko knowledge aap se mil sake aap waise hi busy rehte hain all over the world ghumte rehte hain lecture lete rehte hain so definitely we'll have sir and uh, uh, thank you so much for joining thank and you, uh, thank you all participants uh, uh, for joining us at rehabilitation sciences uh, group and uh, i would request you all to please do subscribe this channel so that uh, many and many more uh, eminent people are coming here on this platform and uh, they are going to share knowledge so you keep get, getting update uh, so thank you once again sir thank you so much thank you sir thank you just sikh jaate jaate ek choti si cheez ji uh, sir main sabko wish karna chahunga ki wo safe rahe healthy rahe is time mein kyunki bahut stressful time hai aaj aur ek choti si request sabse karna chahunga ki 2 minute jab ye lecture khatam ho jaye wo apne man mein prarthna kare hamare first लॉस पर फिजियोथेरेपी कम्युनिटी का आज एक बेंगलोर में हमारे फिजियोथेरेपिस्ट थे जिनकी आज कोरोना से डेथ हुई है जी तो मैं रिक्वेस्ट करूंगा कि सब हम उनकी आत्मा की शांति के लिए एक छोटा सा प्रे करें जी सर बिल्कुल सर बिल्कुल थैंक यू सर थैंक यू विल डू दैट सर